prices. Um, and if there's any interest to declare, do so at this stage. If not, then we'll move on. Um, with apologies in from Emma Rogan. Um, uh, Shania Bradley is hoping to join with us via the teleconferencing facility. And Clark, I will invite to indicate if any members have delegated their authority to vote under the relevant standing order. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Emma Rogan has delegated authority to vote on her behalf um, to the Deputy Chair, Linda Dillon. Okay, thank you. Um, then Item two on the agenda is the transfer of a statutory function relating to procedures of special educational need and disability. It's pages five to eight of your meeting pack. The department has written regarding a proposal to transfer a statutory function um, in respect of this issue from the Department of Education to the Department of Justice by way of a transfer of functions order, which is due to be taken forward by the First and Deputy First Minister before the summer recess. <coughs> order is subject to affirmative resolution. Uh, the transfer of responsibility for this tribunal to the Department of Justice took place in 2011. However, the transfer is incomplete due to an oversight and a power to make changes to the procedural regulations that govern the practice of the tribunal uh, remaining with the Department of Education. And as a result, both DE and DOJ have to make regulations to change procedures which are complex and inconvenient. A resolution of this difficulty is required as changes to the regs will need to be made as a result of the implementation of the Special Educational Needs and Disability Act of 2016 with the Special Educational Needs Framework. Um, the transfer of statutory functions require agreement from uh, ministers of both departments and the relevant assembly committee. So, members, it's just to seek uh, your view that uh, you're content with the proposal to make this transfer of the statutory function, um, making the changes to these procedural regulations um, in respect of SENDIST from the Department of Education and to the Department of Justice by way of a transfer functions order that will be taken forward by the First and Deputy First Minister. Are members content? Content. Great. Okay, members, then if you're uh, content, we'll seek agreement to write to the Education Committee and the Executive Office Committee advising them of the Committee's position on this issue. Item three is the Domestic Abuse Family Proceeding Bill proposals for oral evidence sessions. Um, pages three to seven of the table pack. There's so far 82 written submissions uh, have been received um, by lunchtime yesterday. That may have changed uh, by now, but a further submission from the PPS was received later in the afternoon. Several more submissions will be expected later um, this week. Uh, copies of all the submissions are available for members electronically and a hard copy of any submissions can be requested from the committee office. So um, members, it's just to seek your uh, agreement that the written submissions would be placed on the committee bill webpage as is normal practice and then appropriate arrangements will be made in relation to the submissions uh, from individuals. Um, so if members are first two steps here, content that we, we would do that by way of uh, the written submissions, content, um, Great. and then consideration will need to be given to which organisation should be asked to provide oral evidence at our meetings that are to be held on the 18th, 25th of June and then, if necessary, the 2nd of <coughs> July. A list of those organisations have been submitted, uh, that have submitted written evidence have been uh, provided. Um, so we're hearing evidence on Thursday from Women's Aid and uh, the Men's Advisory uh, Project. Um, as a suggested way forward, I'm going to recommend that Christine would draw up a table highlighting the areas that the submissions have covered um, and where members would like to have an organisation come forward if you advise the clerk, if there's a particular group that you would like, um, so that that can then form a paper that we could discuss uh, at our meeting on Thursday. Um, and uh, to make some provisional arrangements, uh, I'm suggesting that the, the next groups that would come on the meeting of the 18th of June, um, that we would take evidence from victim support, the NSPCC and Bernardo's, and then there's a pressing issue in terms of the Attorney General um, to hear evidence from him around the extraterritorial issue. Um, and combined with that, um, Section 8 guidance is being laid on a human rights related issue. Um, and that office is going to become vacant on the 30th of June, and, and therefore there are issues that need to be tidied up um, before that, that is dealt with. So I'm, I'm going to be recommending that we would take uh, the AG's evidence on the Domestic Abuse Bill and the Section 8 guidance. Normally I would prefer to have left the AG's 
until the end of the process. But in light of the the arrangements with um, in terms of the the vacancy that will arise in that office, um, I think it's important that we would get that evidence session covered um, next week. So, um, if if members are content, relay once you've had a chance to look at the submissions. Um, Christine will draw up a table summarising the evidence sessions and uh, where members then want to, to suggest a particular group, advise Christine of that, we'll put that into the discussion paper. Um, I make one observation on this from, from previous experience. There's a lot of groups that we would all like to have. Um, it's about getting groups that will provide more value to their written submissions as opposed to a rehearsal of what the written paper is. Um, and we're under a time constraint to try and get um, all of these evidence sessions completed. So um, I just make that by way of observation, um, not to thwart people's attempts to get other groups in, but we'll, we'll need to come to a considered view as to what further groups that we're going to take for the, the, the subsequent two weeks of evidence. Linda? Um, just in relation to that, kind of a, a rule of thumb, that I went by whenever I was a councillor, whenever I spoke to groups or organisations that wanted to present a development, I said, if you just want to tell us about your organisation, that's a written submission. Yeah. Or a different type of event where, you know, you have some kind of event where you have lots of different groups coming and telling you about their organisation. For me, it's to come if you have an ask, if you have a specific thing within this legislation that you feel that you need to make your argument in relation to, to this committee then I think that's important that those groups would be coming and, and you know, with that with that ask or having to make that point because for me if you're not coming to present with you know, with an ask, then what is where's the value of it? And, and that's a way I think of, of what we're doing. That's not to say I think there is value in meeting all of these groups and understanding what they do and what they're about. But that's a different type of event. And, and there's nothing to pre prevent us from hopefully doing something like that in the future. But this, this isn't it. I think we do need to stick to, you know, what is the ask? What is it that we need to hear as a committee? Paul? Well, yeah, I, I'd agree <coughs> with that. I would also add that there's probably a danger here uh, compared to any other bill. Because the movement of this bill was so popular, uh, there, there may be risk in regards to making sure that we pass the best possible bill possible. Not just because it's popular and the thing to do and the thing we've been waiting for, but to make sure that each clause is the right thing to do and the most effective. So again, if there's groups that are here to tell us how great the bill is, that's all well and good and we can probably pick that up in a written submission. But if there's people out there who are still concerned about certain clauses, or certain aspects left out of the bill, then I think those are the people we need to hear about sooner. Uh, and also, I've always, again, this is very hard to manage, but there are there will be a group of, of victims out there, or even alleged victims out there, who we, we may, may, may well have to hear. And they maybe aren't uh, in any sort of support group or involved in any sort of organization. They may well have <coughs> help from organizations in the past, but they're individuals, and it strikes me that this bill could well help those individuals, whether it be the court's issue or whether it be just the experiences they've suffered at the hands of a perpetrator. I think it's important that we encapsulate those people, even though they're individuals. And I, I don't know yet how we can do that safely and assuredly, but it's something I think we need to look for. Well, um, Christine has been working up um, proposals as to how we can meet with individuals um, and that would be more of an informal thing that, that you know, members can assist with and certainly I and, and the, Linda will, will, will be doing that to anonymise and to hear because it is important that we do hear from people even if it is um, from those individuals to, to try and put into context you know, the legislation and the actual impact. Um, so I think we're cognisant of, of getting that kind of evidence with us. So if, if members are content, um, I think a summary paper will be helpful so that we can identify those groups that are saying the bill doesn't include this, we would like that, uh, and start you know, homing in on, on that aspect and rather than just, yes, a general, this is, this is good, and um, that's not necessarily going to assist the committee, I suppose, in, in trying to see if there's anything more that needs to be done. So we'll, we'll get a, a, a paper written if you're content with 
um, the, the evidence session for the 18th of June to cover victim support, NSPCC, Bernardo's and the Attorney General. And then we'll have a paper for the meeting that I'm going to recommend takes place today week. Um, I think Thursday could be too tight to, to get a proper paper for members to consider the or future oral evidence sessions, but today week um, we will be able to, to follow up on this, um, and that will dictate then the evidence that we'll hear on the 25th and the 20th of July. <coughs> okay, members content then content. We'll proceed. Um, and the, the clerk has outlined, just as Paul mentioned that in, in the memo, the best way to identify individuals willing to meet the committee members and then the areas that we could cover in those, those informal meetings. So if you're content with the approach outlined, that that's the way that we are, are going to proceed in that respect, which I've <coughs> touched on there. Um, item two, or sorry, item, agenda item four, um, it's on page 11 to 12, correspondence from the Minister uh, advising of her intention to carry out a stock take of policing oversight and accountability arrangements later in the year. The Minister has stated that she's not seeking to make significant changes to the current arrangements, but given the various bodies have been in place for around 20 years, and it is 10 years since devolution of policing and justice powers uh, to the Assembly, um, she considers it timely to uh, take a stock take of how arrangements are operating and identify any areas for improvement. Stock take will focus on making improvements within the existing structures with a view to identifying any changes needed to improve the interface between respective bodies and avoid any unnecessary overlaps or duplication. And the department uh, will carry out a pre-consultation engagement with key stakeholders, including this committee, and before wider uh, public consultation. That pre-consultation will not commence until September, given the current circumstances. In the meantime, officials will carry out some desktop work to inform discussions and the Minister is happy to take any inputs or thoughts uh, that the committee uh, may have. So members, it's there for noting unless members wanted to comment, Duke. Yeah, Chair, the only thing I would ask, I mean September, <coughs> I mean there's an awful lot happening between now and September. I'd be interested to see when we're likely to see the draft terms of reference um, because that, that'll help formulate our, our input into this, I guess. Yes, and I suppose that that'll come whenever the official consultation is is launched. Um, I think the pre-consultation process is a welcome thing because it allows us to, to tease out with the minister and the department some of the the thinking behind this, um, and ultimately then that will be instructive to the consultation that would then be launched, and that obviously would need to be framed by way of terms of reference. So I, I regard this as a positive you know, engagement rather than mm. waiting to engage with us when a consultation is launched um, and that hopefully can help shape the initial consultation process. So um, I'm happy that we, we would take part in that pre-consultation engagement. Okay, okay, members, well, we can indicate that to uh, the department that we'll want to, to be involved in that process. Item five, um, the Minister has provided the Committee with a copy of the five-year digital justice strategy um, that was recently approved by the Criminal Justice Board. The aim of the strategy is to help ensure a coordinated approach to digital developments and maximise opportunities to deliver a more effective justice system. The strategy is based around three themes and priorities have been set for each of the next two years. Regular updates will be provided to the Criminal Justice Board on how delivery is progressing against the priorities and the Department's happy to provide further details to the Committee if that would be uh, helpful. So members, there is some further information outlined in the Clark's memo um, to ask the Department uh, to provide. If members are content, we will request that information. Um, agreed? And then we'll also um, seek regular updates on the progress being made against the priorities in the strategy. Okay. And item six, um, European Union exit update on uh, related justice issues. The UK government has published a series of draft legal text for the negotiations on the UK's exit from the EU in May, including a draft agreement on law enforcement and judicial uh, cooperation in criminal matters. The EU's draft text of the agreement on the new partnership <coughs> with the United Kingdom was published in March. Uh, the command paper for the UK's approach to Northern Ireland Protocol is now also available online. The House of Lords EU Committee also published its report on the protocol and it includes information that was gathered during a meeting with a number of committee chairs and members during a visit uh, to Belfast on the 25th of February earlier this year. Um, I attended an, in an informal lunchtime meeting 
Um, at the beginning of April, the committee had agreed for an oral briefing on the justice-related issues arising from the EU exit, and um, that that would be deferred until resumption of normal business, unless it became essential uh, in the meantime. So, given the work of the UK's exit from the EU is progressing, um, if members are content, I think it would be timely to get an oral briefing to, to be updated from the department um, before the summer recess, and um, we should schedule that in. Um, probably for the meeting in July. Linda? Um, yeah, I agree. I think we shouldn't try to squeeze it in with, with what we already have planned right up until the 2nd of July. So if it's, you know, if it's something after that, I just think we're already doing two meetings a week. And this is something that is going to be important, that we will need to have a focus on, that we'll need to get our heads around and, and have time to view the papers. So if we could agree that it would be after that. Okay, well, well I, I'm, I want to schedule it for us so that we can get the discussions up and running. Um, I'm cognizant of, in terms of the summer recess and how we can manage that and the normal protocols for urgent business is the criteria to, to hear evidence, but um, I'll certainly discuss with Christine how we can get it scheduled um, because there'll be quite a bit of information that we want to go through on it. So if you can leave that with me, we'll, we'll I'll come back with a suggested way forward on that for a future meeting. Okay, um, item seven, proposed adult restorative justice strategy, um, pages 39 to 131. The department intends to conduct a public consultation exercise on the development of a comprehensive and strategic approach to the use of restorative justice in all aspects and at all stages of the adult uh, criminal justice system. Consultation document has been developed in partnership with PPS, PSNI, uh, Probation Board, <coughs> Service Victim Support, Community Restorative Justice uh, Ireland and Northern Ireland Alternatives and the consultation will be running for 12 weeks. The Department has provided a copy of the draft consultation document, the Equality Screening Form and the Rural Needs Impact Assessment. So if members are content to note the planned consultation and consider this matter further when the department provides the result of the consultation process and proposed way forward. Brilliant. Um, um, eight. Um, minister has it, uh, written advising the department is considering restarting the accreditation process for community-based restorative justice organisations, uh, which was paused in 2016 by the then minister Claire Sugden. In seeking to restart the process, the Department has found out that at the time of devolution of policing and justice, uh, these functions in 2010, uh, the transfer of functions uh, admitted to include statutory functions in relation to accreditation of community-based restorative justice schemes in Northern Ireland, and as a consequence, the functions are retained by the Secretary of State. Work is ongoing with the NIO to agree both a short-term and a permanent fix. The Minister is intending to enter into an agency agreement with the Secretary of State to allow the Department of Justice exercising these powers set out in Section 43 of the Justice and Security Act 2007 and has provided a copy of that draft agreement. Um, the Minister will update the Committee once the formal agreement has been finalised and a way forward on identifying a permanent fix um, has been agreed. So it's for members to note the Minister's intention to enter into this agency agreement with the Secretary of State in respect of accreditation of community-based restorative justice schemes in Northern Ireland, unless members require any further information. Chair, why was it stopped in 2016? Mm. I'm not sure of the reason for stopping it, but mm. um, the restarting of it, having looked into it, there's a lot of information in the papers around the process for accreditation. This is, this is a, a technical issue as to who, what department um, is responsible for that. So I know some members you know, will want to explore at a future point, what is the criteria? How do you go through the accreditation? This is where this issue is about where um, the function lies as opposed to the substantive issue um, around the, the criteria for accreditation and so on. So, but why, why it was paused, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. All right, members content then? We'll probably find out later on. Linda? Just uh, to be kept updated in relation to the permanent fix of that. Yeah, okay. That's fine. Correspondence. Um, there's uh, one item of correspondence um, in the meeting pack. I'm um, sure content of the action as outlined in the cover sheet. Um, I have no other business. Any other business for members? Um, 
then the next meeting of the committee is taking place um, on Thursday. Um, I've had to pull it forward by half an hour to start at 10 a.m. So apologies for the short notice on that. Um, the communities committee is meeting at 1 p.m. and we need to uh, vacate the meeting. And given that we're hearing evidence on the domestic abuse bill from um, two organisations, better to err on the side of caution that we don't run out of time. Uh, and that's the reason that we're, we've had to bring it forward to 10 o'clock. So apologies for for that. Um, if members are content, um, I've had discussions with Christine in advance of this in terms of the, the benefit of it. I know I benefited from being able to, to spend more time reading the, the papers for this meeting. Um, the indications are, and I'm happy for Christine to comment, that it has been helpful for the committee staff for pro, uh, processing. Um, and a more efficient way of actioning our workload by having this meeting. We've kept it less than the half an hour, um, which I know some members were concerned about. Um, I, I was going to recommend at this meeting that we would have another meeting today week um, at the same time because we already have a number of uh, written papers um, that we need to consider. Um, but I'm, I'm happy for Christine to provide some more comment around the, the logistics of this meeting. <coughs> Um, yes, Chair. I mean, um, apart from the technical difficulty with the pack, as far as we were concerned, the pack had gone out last Friday or last Thursday afternoon. Um, but there was technical difficulties, which meant it didn't. But it wasn't um, because we were working on it or anything. It was all ready to go. Um, it is easier to <coughs> download remotely smaller packs than absolute massive packs, to be honest. Um, and it also gives us a bit more flexibility because we can move things about. So, for example, on Thursday, we haven't put in correspondence because we can do it the next Tuesday. Um, it just gives us that flexibility and with a number of written papers because we do get things in on a Monday that if we're only going to meet on the Thursday and we don't get it into the pack, it's two weeks and sometimes the dates don't... We, we have to bring it to the attention of the committee. So it does provide that flexibility just over the next period of time while we're taking evidence on the domestic abuse bill. Otherwise, the Thursday meetings, there's likely to be at least six to ten written papers on every Thursday meeting, um, as well as your evidence sessions. So from the staff's point of view, we, it's manageable for us. OK, so if members are content, we'll have... Um, another meeting of the committee next Tuesday. It'll be the same format, and um, we'll seek to have it concluded within half an hour. Okay. Sure. Oh yes, sorry, Sinead. Sorry, Chair. Just uh, while we're on that, while I hope to be able to join actually the committee, the Starleaf system has there been any progress with that? Because it really is difficult to join remotely, and and mindful that maybe during the summer months we may require meetings, and other members may be using that platform as well. Yeah, we, we, I, I'm pushing behind the scenes to get the Starleaf. Um, it, it has been trialled at an ad hoc committee, um, and we may be able to use it, um, or we may not. Uh, Dara uh, is, is seeking to use the Starleaf, um, and that would be the first you know, statutory or standing committee that, that, will, that will trial it on Thursday. Um, if I can have it on Thursday, I would be using it on Thursday, but... Um, at this stage, I think that's unlikely, uh, and there's also a licensing issue that once we know that it definitely is a viable option, then the Assembly need to get the licence to extend it out for other committees, because at the moment only one committee can use it at any one time, is my understanding. Christine, do you want to...? Yes, um, it's being trialled tomorrow and Thursday. Um, unfortunately, both ourselves and Agriculture Committee are looking forward on Thursday. Um, I think Agriculture Committee have more witnesses um, participating remotely and therefore I think they're going to use it on Thursday but um, if it works well tomorrow and Thursday with the statutory committees then my understanding is the equipment for um, to put it in more committee rooms is already here um, and they will move to get the licenses so that we can use it in each committee room and um, so if not by next week <coughs> definitely the following week we should be able to use any committee should be able to use it um, when they're meeting Okay, Sinead? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay, members, thank you. Meeting adjourned. Committee room 30.